Hello and welcome to Tea Time with Torloth. Today I've got Pokemon back on the chopping block, talking mostly about some issues I've had with perception about how these games are developed, especially with the newer ones, and a little bit about just how I feel about the Olive Armor and Pokemon Sword and Shield in general. But I think that's enough of me freeforming. Let's get to the script. The Switch is an impressive realization of what NVIDIA tried to do with their Shield line so many years ago. I think the Android operating system of the Shield and its lack of support for NVIDIA was trying to do killed the Shield line prematurely. However, Nintendo and NVIDIA showing the world what was possible with the wonderful Breath of the Wild, a fantastic game with an impressive scope but one with all the new ideas and built from the ground up for the weak Wii U. And I want to emphasize this. Built from the ground up. So when I paraphrase this tweet I saw after the launch of the new Pokemon Snap trailer and try to explain to you why, just remember this one key phrase. Built from the ground up. And here's that quote. Why can't Game Freak make a Pokemon game that looks this good? Because they're building all that came before it with Pokemon Sun and Moon and using an in-house engine. On the flip side, Pokemon Let's Go, Eevee, and Pikachu, they use a far more limited system, less Pokemon, less battle mechanics, adopting a lot of what the dialed down mobile game has to offer. Simple catching, simple Pokemon stats, Basically, a third of the mechanics that are in Sword and Shield. I really do understand the disappointment, and personally, I think that Sword and Shield are lacking in other ways besides visuals. Like voice acting, better Pokemon calls, or even just the way the story is. I know everyone wants to be the big hero in games, but Leon steals that thunder away from the player. Not even seeing these encounters might turn people off just a little bit. Pokemon games always made me wonder what the champion actually did. Like, why have police when all the mighty 11 year olds will save the day? I've been meaning to make a video and to go into things I think would make Sword and Shield more polished experience. You see, the trees in the wild area don't bother me as much as the lack of polish in the product we have. I play a lot of smaller scoped games with better polish all the time, like Dragonstar Vanir or any Compile Heart RPG. Quality voice work can carry a puppet show, and Compile Heart show that every time. I'm gonna be honest here, and I feel that Pokemon are the reason people play Pokemon RPGs, or any Pokemon game. They really are the star of the show. So when only Eevee and Pikachu get real calls and everyone else gets something that sounds like it's on the Game Boy sound chip, this is probably the place where you can get a lot of goodwill from fans. That and Pokemon that follow you. Now this was added for the Isle of Armor, but only for that wild area and that zone, it seems. Hopefully this gets patched for the entire map at some point and will be included in every upcoming title. The base story from Pokemon Sword and Shield is fine. And for the most part, it isn't bad. But comparing it to other games in the series, it's very safe. I think a lot of development was spent on the wild area, and these games are carried more by the player wanting to progress rather than a tantalizing story anyway. But on the flip side, there have been several games where the story halts the player's journey dead. And for the most part, Pokemon Sword and Shield story gets out of the player's way, for better or worse. To me, Pokemon is at its best when you find your own stories rather than following the path blindly. But this is part of the issue with Sword and Shield. The player is too free from the story. It needs to be a balance struck. To me, the, the Pokemon game with the best story was Sun and Moon. Mostly because I actually cared about Lily more than any other Pokemon girl, rival, whatever you'd like to call her. She felt like a friend of mine, someone I knew long ago, and someone who 
I wanted to make sure made it through okay. I wanted to make sure she was safe. She was going through hard times. And at every turn, she was trying to avoid people. And find your place in the world. And do what was right. Yeah. Maybe not everyone likes her as much. I didn't play Ultra Sun and Moon. Sword and Shield, I don't care about Hop. Outside of just basic looks and character traits, like, oh, she's got a Yamper. She's this trainer. She's this. The gym leaders might have a little more personality than most games, but for the most part, there's not a whole lot of that here. There's not a whole lot of compelling characters and a story that is good. Again, it's very safe, but I had so much fun enjoying this safe and wholesome kind of game. It was just, it was a fun game, but I don't think just because the game is fun doesn't shield it from the criticism, doesn't make it okay. And then I have to talk about this DLC, this expansion we have. The replacement for the third game in the series, which we actually haven't got in quite a while. Now, as of time of writing and time of filming, only the Isle of Armor is available. And the story here is very basic, very short, and just kind of is there to get you up in the know on how stuff works here on the Isle of Armor. Regardless of how meh the story is there is some very interesting ideas on display here and some real promise for for wild area pokemon games in the future uh if you take a look around the wild area here and some of the footage i'm showing there's like tunnels there's forests that look beautiful and maybe they're a little bit more limited in scope but they're still open and free Yes, not everything's like a city, and I think you could still have cities and these more open areas in between. But that could be a more interesting balance. There's more like a, a free open area between points. A tunnel that feels almost like a cave. Maybe a more complicated cave. This is a step in the right direction for this more open area. It doesn't need to be massive. It doesn't need to be an open world Pokemon game. To me, I think open world games have to run, have to strike this perfect balance between amount of content and what is actually good content. Definitely I'm looking forward to whatever Pokemon does next. I will probably not partake in Pokemon Snap since it's never been my game. But I know someone will love it. And there's times where I look at games and I'm like, that looks cool. I know someone who will love that and I will send it along to them. And they, and they love the idea, even if I don't like it. And that's kind of what the Eggplant Award's all about is I hate eggplants. I can't stand them. Their texture, and their taste, ugh, drive me up the wall. I just, ugh, I don't like them. I don't like them at all. But other people love them, and they think they're great. They think they're fantastic. They think they're absolutely delicious. So, as a joke from Neptune, and as someone who's, as they've gotten older, realized that. Maybe this game wasn't as great as everyone said it was, but maybe it's not as bad as everyone says it is. I can take the steps, I can look at something and be like, I like what they're going for. And even I'll talk about a game with someone. I'm like, this was a bunch of cool ideas. Well, it wasn't that good a game. It only got this rating. Even if the game only got a 40% on Metacritic or like a 50%, that doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean it's broke. It doesn't mean anything else. What it means is the vast majority of people didn't like it. You should never be ashamed of playing video games. You should never be ashamed of liking a game that other people don't. It goes back to that hive mentality that people have. 
Yeah, I play Overwatch every once in a while with my friends. And I don't care for some of the other games they play. Like Ark, Guild Wars, Minecraft. I don't care for them. I don't find enjoyment in them. But at the same time, I'm not going to waste my breath or my time or anything being mad about a game not being what I want it to be. Well, I don't want this game. It's not for me. That's why when someone feels so entitled to have every game appeal to them, honestly, it's kind of a breath of fresh air when I watch a preview event, a sizzle reel or something, and I see a bunch of games that aren't for me. Because then I can just go, ah, oh, well, this is a game. Someone else can enjoy it for me. I wish more people could think like that and could realize that it's not I'm not trying to be toxic when I say, well, someone else can enjoy that for me. I'm trying to genuinely be happy for someone. Like, you got your game. I'm, I'm excited for you. I hope it's good. And that's why when, when I see these divisive reviews, I'm going to talk about The Last of Us 2 for a second. I haven't played it. I've seen the story for it. I personally think that The Last of Us didn't need a sequel at all. It told a story. It was finished. It was good. And I know there are people out there who love it. There are people who hate it. But for me, I think what got it the most hate wasn't the characters in it. It wasn't anything like that. It was reviewers praising it nonstop. Like, this is the best game I've ever played. This is a masterpiece. This is absolutely fantastic. That sort of praise, that sort of mentality, like this is a must play game. I don't, I don't like that. Like, I'm excited to play Cyberpunk. But I don't care what other people have to say about it, really. And people that want to play Cyberpunk will play Cyberpunk. People that don't want to play it will just not play it. And that's fine. The game will probably sell well. It'll get expansions, DLC, whatever. But I want people to understand. Is hating someone else's thing just for hating it? And not even giving it a try. It's just a bad way to live. And that's why I get all this disappointment. Like, I understand why people are disappointed with Pokemon. Bring it all the way back. Bring back Pokemon. I understand why Sword and Shield and even Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu are disappointing games to the hardcore audience. Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu are... A lot like the mobile game that you probably don't play. And Sword and Shield are very beginner friendly. If you're a competitive player, you probably love it. Because it has all the tools you need and the story kind of gets out of your way. So you can get where you need to. Get the items you need to get your teams up and going. And it has an excellent rental system. That you can use online teams even. And share your teams on the world. With the world. And I didn't even go into competitive mechanics or the battle system. I know a lot of people like to hate on the Pokemon battle system. And I think you could improve it. But it's hard to improve it without changing it. Things like Mega Evolution, Z-Moves, and Gigantamaxing feel like they're just a way to spice up combat encounters rather than make it better. It would take a lot of effort to evolve the Pokemon battle system. It would take a lot of effort to change what's already been set. And I I don't know if it needs that. I argue it could use some streamlining. Honestly, is Pokemon expansion pass, is it worth it to you? That depends. I'd say if you just wanted more Pokemon to catch or more area to explore, sure. The story and whatever isn't quite there for you, but it also gave me an interesting idea that I wish Game Freak would come into or 
implement. The idea that everyone's starting in the same town makes it really easy for story purposes to progress. But to me, I think what would be more interesting is if you got to choose which town you went to. Like if you start in the ice town in Sword and Shield, I can't remember its name right now. If you started there, you get a different choice of starters maybe, and it'd be the harder difficulty. And you could start in the regular town and it could be the beginner friendly tour with the explanations, like the tutorial. It could be cool. It would obviously make it harder to tell the story because it could be disjointed, but I think it could be a cool addition to a Pokemon game. If you would be inclined and would like to, uh, I will revisit the Crown Tundra when it arrives, whenever that is. I'll make a video at some point. So if you would like to be notified when I make my next video next week about something that I'm not sure what it will be about yet, I would very much appreciate if you would subscribe. And if you like this video, feel free to like it or dislike it. If you have any suggestions that I didn't think of for Pokemon or didn't really word well, then uh, yeah, go ahead, put those underneath. Maybe they'll come look at it if we get enough views or whatever. I do read the comments and if you do send things, I will see it even if you're a bot. But that's it for me. Until next time, have a night.